I bet that you have these too. A woman in your life, grandma, aunt, sister, mom, they've told you their beauty secrets or they told you things throughout your life that you have carried into your adult life and now you've shared them with your daughter. Now you're starting to share them with your granddaughter. These are the wisest things that you can do in your beauty routine that women have been doing for ages, at least the women in my family, and I'm going to share those with you today. Hello friends, I am sharing these wonderful tips and tricks that my mother, my sisters, my aunt, whoever has through the years told me, taught me, and they have never done me wrong. So I'm excited to share those with you today. I'm going to put a timestamp right here because this timestamp is going to take you directly to those tips because we always spend a few minutes talking about a few other things such as what I'm wearing and whatnot. And if you're not interested in that, skip over it, go to this timestamp right now. All right, the first thing we do is we talk about my shirt. I always love a shirt with neck detail and this one is so much fun. I love this. Again, this t-shirt material, but it's an elevated t-shirt and that's what I love to wear. It just makes me feel so much more confident when I have something pretty to put on, even if it is something that I can lounge around the house in and that is this t-shirt. It is very true to size. I wear a large and I love that it's a longer one goes over the belly, goes over the butt. It's something that really works really good for me. This is what pretty much all of my shirts are. And then I also want to show you the earrings that I am wearing. These are a really beautiful boho earring. They have the little shells here, the beads. They've got the, um, it's almost like a brassy color on here, kind of a burnished brass color on there. Really like that. Then my bracelet, I love this bracelet. It's one of those ones that is so blingy and so pretty and I've been wearing it nonstop and it hasn't tarnished. So I'm really glad about that. I do want to show you my new thumb ring. I love these fidget rings. Have you guys seen them? So this is a 925 silver, so it's not going to tarnish. I wear it constantly, but a fidget ring is a ring that you can play with if you're nervous. And I'm usually always nervous and playing with it, but it's got these little rings or little bands that are on it. But what I love about this one, hopefully I had that where you could see it. What I love about this one is the rose inset in it is so pretty. And so it's really pretty on as well. The other rings that I have on are rings that I've worn before and they will be linked except for of course my wedding ring. I <laughs> can't link that one. And speaking of links, I always list all of my products down below one to however many we get through today. So say it's one through 10, they will be listed and linked below. What will happen is right here on the screen, I will put up a number that will correspond to whatever product that I'm talking about. So you don't have to remember that product. You don't have to remember the color. You don't have to remember any of that. And you just remember that that was number Number three, go down into the description box and you can shop that way. Just find number three. Before we go any further too, I did want to tell you, and I'm going to have a lot of people ask me about this fingernail polish. This is the nail polish color right here, but I have, my power just went out and I think I said the D word like 10 times. Okay. I'm back. So this is the color that I have on. You guys, behind the scenes, you never know what's going on. This is the color I have on from Zoya. It will be listed and linked below. But what is really cool is the duochrome, really shiny look that you see on the nails right there. That is from these toppers that I found on Amazon and they have all different duochrome colors in here. So this one is a pink. I think there's a purple, a blue, a green, and a yellow, but that will be linked along with everything else down below too. That is is the intro. Let's get into these very wise beauty tips that these women have passed on to me. Okay, we're going to start with fingernails. I always have natural nails because I've never been able to wear acrylics. I used to really want to, but they would never stay on me. I have a very oily nail bed. But okay, the first thing is my mother always told me as soon as you get out of the shower or the bathtub, your cuticles are really soft. So instead of using a cuticle remover, a chemical, just go in with a push tool or one of your fingernails and just push your cuticles back while they're wet. What you'll find is that all of that nasty skin that grows around the cuticles, it's gonna come straight up 
and your cuticle is going to go back quite a ways. This keeps your nails really healthy. If your cuticle overgrows, they have a tendency to split or you'll get the little corners that um, are hangnails and then they bleed. And that's really not good for the health of your nails. So do that as you get out of the shower. That is a tip that she taught me when I was very, very little. Tip number two is after you're done with that cuticle pushback, go ahead and grab yourself some sort of an oil. Your nails are still going to be plump and juicy from the water that you've just been in. And so this is a great time to lock that moisture in. And it's really great to use a nice oil because oils are pretty much occlusive and also it helps your nail because obviously your actual nail is just like your hair it's dead but we need to moisturize it in order for them to keep as much health as they can even though they're not alive so i just use um, the marula oil from the ordinary i love marula oil the ordinary has a ton of oils and they're a hundred percent organic and natural and you cannot beat the price. So any of them that you want, one of my other favorite ones is B, the, their B oil, um, the letter B, because it has it's chock full of a bunch of different oils. So it's really good for the health of your skin and all good, all kinds of yummy stuff in it. So I really do like that one as well. The marula oil I use on all kinds of things. So yeah, that's one of my favorites. Another tip about nails is my sister always said, nails are jewels not tools <laughs> i that has stuck with me so much because i cannot tell you how many times i've been picking at something with one of my nails or trying to scratch off a label or a get open a a can of pop or something and i popped a nail and the whole nail is ruined well she would always tell me just grab a tool grab the end of a butter knife or grab you know whatever you have to grab to do those things instead of using your nails and that has served me so well through the years she used to do acrylic nails for people and she would see people come in all the time with that nail right there because they had done something with it that you know they popped it off and she would always say nails are jewels not tools. So I really love that my sister passed that down to me. All right, so the next one is a combination of nails and hair. So this is a tip for nails and hair, and that is never use these nails to scratch your scalp. And that is because your scalp will become hyper irritated by that. I've always been taught to use the pad of your fingers. If you go in um, and like my husband loves me to use my fingernails to scratch his back and I won't do it. It's just like if you used a nail file on your actual skin, it's going to rough it up. And sometimes we go too deep because it just feels so good to get in there and just scratch it that we go too deep and we will irritate it. And then our scalp is irritated and it disrupts the balance that we have on our scalp. So be careful and never use your nails on your scalp as much as you might be tempted to do that. All right, the next one is never ever pick a pimple that's the one, but never ever use your nails to pick a pimple either. Now, I have a really hard time with this one because I cannot stand to go around with a white head. It just, it, it grosses me out. I think it's one of those things that just Oh, I just can't handle it. So I will scratch off a whitehead. Um, I usually try to do it with a, a clean cloth. And the reason is, is because there is so much bacteria underneath our fingernails, unless you're in there scraping right before you go in and pick a pimple. But you shouldn't pick a pimple anyway, because it actually causes more inflammation. And then it fills up more unless you get down there and get the head. And if you got down there and you get the head of that pimple, you're actually going to cause a scar no matter what. So we don't want to scar our face. We don't want to use our nails to pick that pimple because you're going to get bacteria in there from the bottom of your nails. So if you're somebody that doesn't mind having that on there until it heals, then, you know, go for it. As I itch my hand, then go for it. I'm, I'm using the pads of my fingers and don't worry about picking your pimples. And there are lots of things there. They have the patches now you can put over a pimple and by the morning it's usually gone. So those are really good. And I can link those below for you as well. All right. The next one is also about the hair and that is do a double cleanse on your hair. Now, why in the world would you do a double cleanse. First of all, the scalp on our head, and I use a scalp treatment to grow my hair anyway. 
um, which I'll link below because I'll know some of you will ask about what it is. So I'll link the, the scalp treatment that I use. It's not a minoxidil, but I will link it below so that you know what it is. It works wonders, by the way. It's worth every single penny that I pay for it. But in order to get my scalp clean and in order for my scalp to really be balanced and because I love this particular shampoo because it is a DHT blocking shampoo, which means that it blocks the hormone that makes you lose your hair or your hair follicle to lose its hair. So I go in with this and so this is like my scalp treatment, right? So I use this and I get all of that gunky stuff off my scalp. I let this sit on my scalp for a couple of minutes while I'm doing something else and this is my first cleanse of my hair. And then I find that if I only use this, my hair is very, very flat during the day and I don't get any volume out of it. So I actually go in with a second shampoo. This is my Kenra shampoo. This is for max maximum volume. So I go in with this next for volume because this one is not going to give me any volume, but it's going to really give my scalp a really good scrub. It's also got a lot of biotin in it and vitamins like that and the DHT blocker in it. So I do a double cleanse and I have heard that from the women in my family for as long as I can remember. So love that tip. Another tip, and I could not believe this this morning because I went downstairs to find this to show you guys and it's gone. Okay, <laughs> let me tell you what it is first. Apple cider vinegar will actually balance the pH of your scalp. So using an apple cider vinegar as a rinse on your hair, number one, it's going to balance that pH, but it's also gonna make your hair super shiny. It stinks like heaven knows what, and yeah, you're in there with, you know, stinky feet, on your hair, but afterwards I rinse my hair out and then I'll put a little bit of conditioner on the end and it dissipates very quickly so I don't smell like a pickle all day long, but definitely it helps out so much. But my husband takes the apple cider vinegar every day for his diabetes. He takes a tablespoon of it for his diabetes. That's another tip that I don't even know why it's in here. We, we just use a lot of apple cider vinegar and I happened to be out when I needed to record this video. So that was really smart. All right, the next one. These are the loveliest gloves you've ever seen. Wear your gloves while you're cleaning your house, especially if you're working with chemicals or doing dishes. And well, you don't have to do it any other time, but yes, while you're doing your dishes and while you're working with chemicals, you know, cleaners, whatever you're doing, use your gloves. Now, my whole thing when I was younger was when I put my hand in there and I do whatever, and especially if it's in hot water, I, my hand are wet when I pull them out. But the difference is, is number one, if you are using really hot water, it protects your hands and your nails from that hot water because we all know that once hot water dissipates, then you're going to have redness and it's going to dry out like crazy. Chemicals, same thing. Sometimes you're going to irritate this skin. It's gonna be bad. It's not gonna be good for your nails themselves. It can make them chip and split and yes use use gloves as much as you possibly can i know they're a pain but i got into that habit as a very young girl um, my mother always said get your gloves because she was having me use like lime away one time and obviously that's something that's going to eat your skin so i learned that at a very young age and it's something that has served me very well and also on your hair as we're talking about apple cider vinegar also on your hair go in and do a cold rinse of your hair at the very end. So you've rinsed out the apple cider vinegar with your warm water, but you want to do a cold rinse. And the reason is, is because if you've used very warm water on your hair, you've opened up that cuticle and now that cuticle is wide open. And that's fine for when you're putting on your conditioner because your conditioner will sink in. But after you, you know, rinsed everything out, go in and make sure you do a cold rinse. I know it is the worst five seconds of your life at the very end of your shower, but I promise you, you're going to love what it does to your hair because it will make your hair so, so shiny. It closes down the cuticle. Heat makes the cuticle expand on our, our hair shaft and then the cold will help seal it. And when it's sealed, you're less prone to split ends and damage and breakage. It's one of those things that my mom taught me a long, long time ago, as long as I can remember 
remember and also we um also started doing our face too because same thing applies you open up those pores with that heat when you're in the shower but you want those pores to be closed down and so you close your pores down with cool water so i know it is like i said it's the worst five seconds of the shower but the hair gets it and the face gets it each time and i swear by it it just has made a huge difference in my complexion and my hair okay the next tip is this right here this is something that I have done as long as I can remember and I don't remember who taught me this I may have read it um, but I think a, some you know one of the women in my life taught us this okay this is a green tea bag and it has caffeine in it you can use a black tea bag whatever um, just make sure that it has it's caffeinated you don't want to use an herbal tea bag because this won't work so the caffeine inside of this tea bag if you've had a ball fest the night before and you have somewhere you need to go the next day that's important and you don't want your eyes to look like they're two balloons sitting there um, you need to try this so the caffeine in the tea bag you just lay it on your eyes for like five minutes ten minutes lay it on your eyes and it's going to help shrink the capillaries and take the excess water from or the puffiness out of your eyes and it's going to work so well the green tea is super soothing and it really does help also with the moisture so it's not going to even though you're taking out the puffiness it's not going to take out the moisture out of your eyes because we need that to you know not look like we're the crypt keeper under here but the, it just is very very soothing tons of antioxidants in the green tea so it's good for the skin that way as well and the coolness that the tea bags it will feel so good especially if you've been crying it will feel so good on your eyes so just so you know steep it in some cool water and then use it that way i swear by it all right i've said this before but since we're talking about nails a glass nail file will be your best friend and i specifically recommend a particular glass nail file where they make these i think it's somewhere in like sweden or somewhere like that but they make it a certain way and i have never had such a nice glass nail file before i've had glass nail files and i love them but this particular set that i got is just a really good set as you use a nail file and by the way you want to file your nails in one direction on each side you don't want to ever go across like this because that's when you really rough up that nail bed and you'll get splitting and chipping so go one way or the other however you need to to shape your nails don't ever go back and forth like this it's just not good so that being said a glass nail file will actually take the end of your nail and it will seal as it's filing emery boards regular nail files they can't say that they just rough it up and they will cause splitting and chipping and your nails will not be healthy at all but a glass nail file will always seal the keratin on your nail bed and it will be your new best friend all right the next tip the last tip that we're going to talk about is about your feet now i have been talking to you guys about this awesome nail this awesome foot file um, it's a glass foot file. I've been talking to so many of you about it. I love this thing, but if you're doing it, don't do it in the shower. Let your feet soak, and then when you get out of the shower, use this on your heels and on the rest of your foot wherever you have really bad calluses. Then those calluses are softened, and this will just take it off with ease. You won't have to work at it, and it really is nice. What you want to do, though, is kind of have your towel next to you because uh, of the lot of that um, more moist skin, more wet skin, will get in here and you're gonna wanna just pat it. This is a fantastic file. Be very careful because it is glass, it's perforated, and it's pretty darn sharp. So I did find out this last week, I have a lot of pain in my feet and I finally broke down and went to the podiatrist. I probably should have done this like years ago. But he tells me that the second toe on my foot sits lower than all the other um, toes in my foot. Of course, I have to be extra and weird but what happens is this part right here on my foot that part is has built up a callus and it also you know pushes down so that callus hurts from it pushing down all the time and that's i thought i actually thought it was warts down there <laughs> because it just looked really gnarly and really nasty but he said no so i can't get this particular one in there because of the way that my foot is shaped i can't get this one in there to actually take that callus down and keep that callus down but i got this this is the flawless foot file 
this is a rechargeable foot file and see how it's just kind of almost like a really big pen or utensil or something so i can get right in there where i need to and get that file down it's electric so it spins and it takes it down pretty ding dang darn fast you can replace this little part you can order those off of amazon and that's actually where i got this one from was from amazon i think this one may have been sent to me I'm not sure. I probably should say that so I don't get in trouble. I think this was sent to me. So, um, but I do love it and it really is able to get wherever you need it to in, if it's a little cranny or somewhere. And you could use this. If you bought this one instead of this one, you can still use this one on your heel because it works every bit as good. So I think that's my last tip, my last wise woman's tip. So I just thought that this video was so much fun because we pass around and we pass down beauty tips all the time. But I want to hear from you guys. I want to hear what the women in your life, your mother, your grandmother, your sister, your daughter, I want to hear what those women have taught you and what your beauty secrets are. Tell us down below and let's get a great conversation going about all of those things. I can't wait to hear those from you. Thank you so much for being with me as always. Let's put up a video right here and let's talk about more tips and tricks. Let's talk about uh, how I get my teeth white. I think that's the one that is here. Here. There's a couple other really great uh, tips in this video. So you can go over and check that one out Hope everybody is doing very well and happy and healthy. I will catch you in my next video. Take care of yourselves friends. Goodbye